Hello and welcome. It is but appropriate that this training program on customs should start off with a session on global trade. Global trade is the movement of goods into and out of a country. The fact that trade is important for the development of any country is again something which one need not emphasize too much. Trade improves productivity, it improves efficiency, it improves prosperity within a country. And customs, by virtue of being at the point of entry and exit of goods coming into or out of the country, play a crucial role in the entire process of trade. All trade ultimately is determined by the principle of comparative advantage, which basically means that I will export those goods in which I am efficient, import those goods in which I am not efficient. It cuts down my costs. It makes great economic sense to do that. Therefore, this is the underlying principle on the basis of which most trade takes place. Where trade is positive, which means you are exporting more than what you are importing, you have a trade surplus. Conversely, where you spend more in purchasing goods from outside, where you import more than what you export, you're having a trade deficit. Trade surplus need not always be good. Trade deficit need not always be bad. America has a trade deficit in excess of 500 billion US dollars. That doesn't make it a a country which is not a strong economy. Conversely, Japan has a trade surplus and is a stagnant economy currently. But having said that, every country aims to promote exports. Every country aims to promote its trade. India has always looked upon global trade as a huge opportunity for very many of its products. It has promoted such trade by trying to relax provisions for exporters, by trying to ensure that all schemes are put in place whereby taxes are never exported, but only goods are exported, which means you have a combination of schemes which are exemption schemes, which are incentive schemes, which are schemes whereby you rebate back taxes paid, all of which have helped promote India's exports. India has huge strengths in some commodities, but the number one commodity of export from India is petroleum products, which may be a surprise to very many. But these are goods which are coming in the form of crude, getting refined and getting re-exported from India. India's number one item of import also is petroleum products. The destination of India's exports depend entirely on the product and the market. USA is a major destination of India's exports, followed by UAE, Hong Kong, Singapore. UAE and Hong Kong basically, as you are aware, are transshipment ports. UAE ports handle all trade between Africa and India. So very many of India's exports to Africa are routed through UAE and it would appear in the Indian records as if these goods are being exported to UAE. Similarly, Singapore is a transshipment port primarily meant for very many other countries. India's merchandise exports have been growing at a pace of around approximately 7% plus. This is in keeping pace with the growth in the GDP itself. However, India's imports also have been growing, which means India's trade deficit currently is in excess of $17 billion. Primarily, India's dependence on crude and its obsession with gold have contributed a lot to this trade deficit. Fortunately, over the last few months, the prices of crude have been coming down and the deficit has been narrowed considerably, but still a matter of some concern. The foreign trade policy it is which lays down the strategy for promotion of India's exports. India realizes that it has to be a major player in the global arena. India realizes that exports have to go up in each one of these countries, in almost all its traditional sectors, and does a lot to promote exports. 
I understand that the speaker subsequently will be speaking in detail about the various schemes itself of the Government of India under the foreign trade policy, which are aimed at promotion of exports. You have the Advanced Authorization Scheme, the DFIA, the EPCG Scheme, Duty Drawback, the MEIS and the ACAIS Scheme, which are pure reward schemes, all of which are targeted to increase India's presence in the global market. Traditionally, India has also been targeting countries where it has been easier to have market access. Africa has been an area of great interest for Indian trade. Of course, the Far East, with India's foreign trade policy of Look East, has been a market which is closer and also has a huge Indian diaspora, which is a good target for Indian exports. India's exports, apart from petroleum products, have been in gems and jewellery, have been in diamonds, have been in textile products, in leather products, in handicraft items, in engineering goods, in sports goods, in uh, pharma products. All these have done extremely well. But the global market is necessarily a very, very competitive market. It's a market where the buyers have all the cards in their hand and are able to ensure that they get better prices, which means everybody is operating on wafer-thin margins. Exporters thereafter have to ensure efficiency and high-quality products to capture that market. China currently has been facing huge global trade winds and is facing for the first time in very many months a recession of sorts with exports coming down. This is an opportunity for Indian exporters to try and exploit. Further, the US-China trade wars are also creating uncertainty in the global market where India should closely look at and try to make use of an opportunity being presented here. Exports necessarily are challenging. You are now trying to enter into a market which you are not familiar with. You are trying to export goods to customers who feel that they ought to get even all the benefits the Government of India is giving you for promoting your exports. Hence, their pricing is extremely challenging. But having said that, remember, once you enter that market and are able to demonstrate that your product is a quality product, you will be there. There are examples, several examples of successful stories of Indian products having made good their presence in foreign markets. Tea, coffee, the plantation crops have all done very well. But of course, Sri Lanka is a major competitor for India and all these products too. The government of India promotes exports by through several schemes. The budget papers typically give the details of the duty foregone, that amount of taxes which are not collected under the various schemes for the promotion of exports. Last year, more than 40,000 crores was the amount of duty foregone under the various schemes. And this is apart from the drawback, which has another nearly 20,000 crores plus. Therefore, a lot of focus is on promotion of exports. Ultimately, exports, however, can promote, can be promoted only if local infrastructure also gets developed. The government is aware of that and taking serious steps to ensure that the hurdles to swift exports of goods or imports of goods are all met. For instance, Navasheva port, the major port of India where nearly 40% of all trade takes place, is a port which is constantly being modernized. The roads approaching the port have been expanded. Multiple lanes now operate simultaneously. We have multiple terminals operating there, including private terminals again with an idea of increasing efficiency and competition amongst terminals. The government has been focusing also on ease of doing business. The World Bank rankings overall improved tremendously and especially in the trading across borders, which is one segment of the ease of doing business criteria, has been significant uh, in the last survey. And this has been possible because of the various steps that the customs have put in place reducing the number of documents required, ensuring there's a single window for all exports. Uh, by single window, 
What I mean is that wherever clearances are required for multiple other agencies, all have been now put in a common platform. That's for instance, if you're exporting pharma products and require clearances from the drug controller through the customs portal, you will now have access also to the drug controllers portal and vice versa. And all clearances are given by the pharmaceutical agencies to the customs for the export of a particular product, which otherwise would have involved you going separately to the drug controller and getting such approvals. So a single window has contributed significantly. The time taken for the release of any products across custom sports have also improved significantly. Automation has always been an area of great concern and the customs have ensured automation across most processes whereby you could swiftly ensure your documents get processed and cleared. All these are aimed at ensuring that your exports are boosted and imports also do not suffer damage. This is done with an idea of promotion of global trade. The current uh, position is that India has around uh, a participation of 1.7% uh, of India's trade forms part of the global trade. Obviously, this is far, far too little. The Prime Minister had recently given a target of 3.4, which is double this 1.7. This is going to be extremely challenging. But this is something which is doable, provided we focus on ensuring quality products, we focus on the markets where you want to exploit, we focus on ensuring that all the schemes which are available in the Government of India are properly studied, and taken advantage of. We focus on building a partnership with foreign partners, with foreign trade, with foreign importers, so that we are there for the long haul. Yes, there are bound to be challenges in the form of fluctuations of currencies, which means your costs may go up, your proceeds may reduce overnight because of lesser the dollar appreciating or depreciating. But these are concerns which the government tries to keep addressing through various schemes of subvention also wherever required. The banks have always been extremely generous in providing credit for exporters. ECGC, the agency which specializes in guaranteeing export credit, has also been playing an active role in promotion of global exports. Global exports are essential for the improvement of a country and it is something which we should all need to focus on. As part of the initiative to promote trade, the Government of India is also entering into several free trade agreements. Free trade agreements primarily mean giving access to your markets, but also getting access for your goods in the markets of the country with whom you have got a free trade. In other words, customs barriers are aimed to be reduced whereby your goods can become more competitive in the market abroad. India has currently 16 agreements, which are both FTAs and PTAs. And uh, the India-ASEAN FTA is particularly popular. Obviously, right now, imports into India under the FTA are much more than the exports. Uh, no proper cost-benefit analysis has been done as to how much we are giving away in the form of duty-free concessions to these imports and how much we are gaining through our exporters having access to these markets. These markets are markets where the rates of duties otherwise also are less and the benefits which the Indian exporter gets is a little lesser. But having said that, the scheme is aimed only for promotion of exports and Indian exporters, again, should carefully look at all such FTAs and PTAs. India is now in the final stages of finalizing a major free trade agreement known as the RCEP, which is the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, which is with the ASEAN countries and its trading partners, which includes China. How this will play out in the future, time alone will tell. But 
This is an agreement which Indian exporters and Indian trade needs to look at very, very carefully to try and see how they can make benefits. An important issue which you as professionals need to keep in mind is that when the negotiation process takes place, the Commerce Ministry reaches out to the trade and industry to understand their concerns. Far too few industry bodies take advantage of this attempt of interaction. In fact, my experience has been that they are completely disinterested and pay a very heavy price later when these agreements get finalized, when they realize that they are giving away far more than what we are getting. But then I think the trade and industry needs to keep this in mind. And RCEP, for instance, is in various stages of discussions. Special uh, committees have been constituted, including one committee to look at goods headed by a professor from the Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore, where I think professionals like you need to interact with and ensure that concerns, if you have any, with the various parameters of the proposed agreement are taken into consideration by the government of India before it finalizes any such agreements. All such agreements are primarily driven by parameters such as rules of origin, which means you want to give the benefit only with that country with whom you have entered into a free trade agreement and not to imports made from some other country, but coming through the FTA route, through that country with whom you have an FTA. Therefore, kindly look at all the requirements of rules of origin. In the existing FTAs, the RCEP will have similar such requirements and should play a major role in the future in India's uh, trade and in the manner in which India's trade is conducted. The Ministry of Commerce which is responsible for promotion of exports, comes out with an annual report. I would urge all of you all to have a look at the annual report, which is available in the website of the Ministry of Commerce. This is a detailed document which spells out the strategies, the challenges, the future roadmap for India's trade. The Commerce Ministry has created specific posts for promotion of trade in almost every single mission abroad. The commercial part of diplomacy now is increasingly being recognized and economic diplomacy, which involves promotion of trade, is a major area of work for all Indian missions abroad. Uh, and you as again professionals should learn to interact with them to find out about markets in specific countries, to find out about the profiles of the proposed trading partner, including whether his credibility is beyond doubt. The Indian missions go the extra mile in trying to provide assistance and you should exploit and take care of that. As professionals, remember, you come with a lot of credibility. This credibility has been hard earned. As professionals, we would expect that you are displaying professionalism, which means high integrity, which means ensuring correctness in whatever is being declared, which means bringing all the facts on the table to the notice of the government, which means advising your clients to ensure that the rules and laws are followed. Tax avoidance is something which you are well entitled to advise. Tax evasion certainly is not. And that's the line which we need to clearly recognize and draw. Much as the client would like to also evade taxes. So as professionals, you have a very, very important role to play because the government recognizes you as people who can be trusted. And you should ensure that trust is never, ever lost.